Um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, yeah, let's see if I can get my slides to work. There we go. Um, so if you're in person, I need you to go ahead and sign the attendance sheet. Um, if you're attending remotely via Zoom, which about six or seven of you are, Jeff Ioni is our other instructional designer in e-learning, and he's going to be the online facilitator. Um, so I think we've got all your videos off. Um, and for now, I have your audio muted. Um, later, when we're doing some work together, you guys are welcome to unmute, you know, and say, ask a question or whatever you need to do. And you can always add questions to the chat, and Jeff is going to monitor that and um, stop me if there's questions. So feel free to use the chat. And of course, for any faculty attending, um, at the end, I have a link to the 10-hour attendance report, since this does qualify um, as meeting the one and a half hour accessible IT training requirement for the year. And just a heads up, the session is being recorded. Um, if you want to edit out anything you see later, we can do that before we share it. Um, but I will be sharing this out, so um, you might let your fellows um, faculty uh, in your divisions and departments know that it will be posted online. So if you found it valuable, you can share it out. I'd appreciate it. Okay, quickly, outcomes for today. Um, I'm going to give a brief overview of um, why accessible IT is important in case you missed the sessions during opening week. Um, and so at the end, you'll be able to explain why it's important. Um, also at the end, you'll be able to list two ways Ally can help faculty make Canvas content more accessible. Um, you will also be able to explain how Ally can help students in your classes right now. Um, number four, you'll be able to fix the accessibility issues for files loaded on a Canvas page. And finally, you'll be able to demonstrate how to download an accessible version of a document. So let's get started. Um, so why accessibility? Why now? Um, what does accessibility even mean? So I turned to the U.S. Department of Education and Justice. Um, these are the folks that like to sue institutions of higher ed um, and uh, force them to do a lot of compliance in a short frame of time frame. So we're trying to avoid that by being a little proactive. And so what their definition of accessible is, is a person with a disability must be able to obtain the information as fully equally and independently as a person without a disability. I just want you to think about that for a minute. Read those words again. You know, how fully, equally, and independently. That's pretty high bar. Um, and here at Shoreline, we've created an accessible IT policy that's supported by our procedures. And our procedures say um, that accessible content has to be delivered within the same time frame with substantially equivalent ease of use. So Ally helps us meet some of these um, goals. So let's carry on. Um, we created Shoreline Policy 3811 um, in response to federal and state laws. Um, the policy, I have a work group called the Accessible IT Work Group that has stakeholders from across the campus. Um, involved and we wrote a policy and procedures and the policy itself was approved by the Board of Trustees last June and it complies with the requirements of federal laws such as Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. It's been around that long and we've been out of compliance for quite a long time. There is also a recent final rule refresh on January 18, 2017 and that is a tough one, and that has given all institutions of higher ed one year to achieve compliance. So January 18th, 2018 is coming up quite quickly. So I'm happy that you're here, and we're gonna start working on these issues. Also last year, um, the Washington OCIO, which is the Office of the Chief Information Officer for the state of Washington, wrote and passed a policy called Policy 188, and that had to do with accessible IT. And so our shoreline policy helps meet the requirements of that policy. And in addition, the SBCTC, which is the State Board of Community and Technical Colleges, also published a policy on access for students with disabilities. So our efforts here at Shoreline are working to meet all of those requirements, the federal and the state. 
Um, and inside for Alliance policy, we have specific language um, that really highlights some of the requirements. So again, the comparable functionality, experience, and information access to students, employees, and community members with disabilities. And this really hits every area of campus because it includes instructional technology, administrative technology, and communications technology and content. So there really is not an area on campus that this policy does not hit. Um, and I just want to point out, so those are the legal reasons why this is important, but from a more um, philosophical standpoint, um, from a more human standpoint, um, diversity includes disability. So we want to make sure we're being inclusive. And this is reflected in our college's strategic plan, goal number three. Um, and when we say we ensure that a climate of intentional inclusion permeates our decisions and practices, which demonstrate principles of ecological integrity, social equity, and economic viability. So really all this work flows right in to support that strategic plan. So it's all good. It's helping on many, many levels. All right, so why are we here today? Today we are really here um, to learn about the Ally tool. And um, I'm not sure how many of you currently have it in your classrooms, but we're going to play around today um, and you're going to use some of the tools in the e-learning faculty resource classroom. So if you don't already have it in your classroom, don't worry, um, but you can sign up for it at the end of the session if you're interested. So what in the world is Ally? All right, so it has a few main features. So right now, it's currently checking any content you upload into your Canvas classroom, and it's checking for accessibility. Um, it's looking for images to make sure they have alternative text. It's looking at your documents that you upload, Word, PDFs, etc., for different um, components of accessible documents. So are there headings? Um, are your tables labeled? Um, and we're going to go into what all that means soon. Um, and Ally was really designed for faculty, so it's trying to be really faculty friendly. Um, they acknowledge that making your online course content accessible is an overwhelming job, and there's no, no doubt that everyone is in agreement. It's a huge job. And so Ally really focused on how could they help faculty remediate content quickly and in a friendly manner <laughs> that's not too overwhelming. So um, we'll talk about that a little more as we go through. Um, and I show you what Ally does for you. Um, I did want to let you know that this is a new tool. Um, it's a cutting edge, uh, best in the world tool, I would have to say. There really isn't anything out there that's as helpful as Ally at this point in time. Um, so coming soon, um, it will be able to assess all your Canvas page content. So right now, it can only look at files you've uploaded into Canvas or uploaded onto pages, but it can't actually look at the content you've put in a page, you, the writing you've added, um, that's coming soon. And also more robust um, checking for captions and other items on videos. So that should all be coming out within this current year. Um, and I'm just going to show you a little quick image on the right here if you can see um, some examples. So there's a little red gauge, I call it a gauge dial, I don't know. Um, but next to an image like this, it's saying, oops, this image isn't accessible. And the, the gauges come in red, yellow, and green. So red on this image, here's a Word document, oh, that's got a red one, something's wrong with that. And here's a PDF, also something wrong with that. So we're going to go ahead and remediate those today, together. But before we do that, um, I just want to let you know, um, there's also a great feature of Ally for students. So they can't see those gauges I just showed you. Those are only for the faculty view. Um, for students, what they do see is um, a little icon that I'm going to show you. It's a little triangle. It's kind of hard to see. Um, but that allows them to have immediate access to alternative formats for your documents. So let's say that um, that Word document we saw that wasn't accessible, they can click to, in two clicks, access, download, and the ability to download accessible versions that are different than the document that's there. So they can download a tagged PDF, they can download an HTML version, an EPUB version, even an electronic Braille version, how cool is that? Or an audio version. And we're gonna play around with that in a little while as well. But that just lets them have immediate access. They're not waiting for you uh, to send an email to you to say, ooh, I can't access this, then you contact. 
student services for um, services for students with disabilities. They contact their person who remediates the content who then sends it back to you and the student and it's two weeks later and you've moved on and they're left behind. So Ally really, really helps students stay current even if your content is not yet fully accessible. All right, so we're going to try this ourselves. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and log into Canvas. So keep your Zoom screen open if you're attending remotely. Open up your browser. Go ahead and log into Canvas. Open eLearning Resources for Faculty. That's a classroom in there. And follow these. So go to your modules view. And then when you're in there, you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom for sample pages for Ally Training. And then you're going to find your alphabet letter and open up that page. So I'm just going to give you a minute or two to do that. And I'll leave these instructions up here. Okay, so I'm going to assume you guys kind of got there, um, and I'll walk you through it one more time as I do it myself. So let me just exit my little PowerPoint here. Okay, so I'm in Canvas here, and I'm opening my eLearning e Resources for Faculty Classroom. I'm going to go to Modules, and then I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. I tucked these way, way down here so they wouldn't be in everyone else's way. Um, here we go. And so here's sample page A, B, C, D. Go ahead and open your own page. I'm going to open my sample page master. And they're going to look very similar with just a different image. Um, yours should all have a letter here instead of a puppy. First, we're going to start with your images. So on that page, you have a little image of a letter. Mine happens to be a dog. And like I mentioned, there's a little gauge here or a dial. And it's red. So that's telling us that, uh-oh, something's wrong. Well, why would that be there? That is there because this image is missing its alt text. And so alt text is short for alternative text. And if that's a new term for you, um, alternative text is a text alternative for non-text content. So why would you need that? So if someone is using a screen reader and has low vision or no vision, um, when their screen reader hits an image without alt text, it just skips it. So if that image was um, the most important key concept in your entire class and the image was skipped, that student with low vision, no vision just missed out on important content. Um, and they don't know, right? Because it could also be, look, I got a brand new puppy. How cute is it? I teach nutrition. That puppy is not for lunch. So that is not why it's there. Um, the student doesn't know that. They just know that they just missed an image. And so they don't know how important it was because they have no context for what it was. So we don't want to leave students out. We want to be inclusive. We want to make sure everyone has access to what we're sharing with our students. Because why would you put it there if it wasn't important? So. Um, you know, when you're creating alt text, you need to keep in mind who your audience is um, and, and what your goal is by sharing that image. Is it the goal of, this is my cute puppy, how cute? Or is it because this is the symbol that represents a huge idea or concept in your class? So what's your goal? Why did you put that image there? And what information are you trying to share with your students? And then you just need to put that down in word format as well as visual. And so we're going to go ahead and try it. So I want you to click on that little ally gauge and follow the instructions. And I'm going to do it here with you as well. So for this puppy, I'm going to click on this little gauge. And here's ally, right? Ally has popped up. Um, I got a 25% for my score. And the reason I got even a little bit of points is because I named the image puppy. So at least there's a little context. Um, but I need to change it because that's really not um, sharing enough information. Now, I gave you guys all letters. You know, there's not a lot you can say about letters, and I understand that. Um, but I wanted to keep it simple so you understood the how-tos first. Um, and what I love about Ally, again, I said it's made for faculty as audience. Um, we have information here, right here. So why does this matter? So you can click on that. And they're going to go through why it's important to have alt text. And then my favorite part is how to write a good description. They have some really well thought out 
short but to the point information. So if you forget, God, why was that important again? You can just click and read it. So um, it goes through why, and it, go, it gives you an example. And then these buttons at the bottom, if you click right, there's a little more information. How to write a good description. Um, and by class, right, in history class versus maybe an art class, you have different goals for that image. Um, more information, how to provide a summary for complex graphs, charts, and maps. We get this question a lot for STEM classes, you know, you want the students to learn how to read a graph, you want them to get knowledge out of it, how do you describe it without giving away the answer? And, and it's not always easy. It's not always a straightforward answer to that. Um, and then there is the chance that my little puppy in my teacup is actually just my puppy. It has nothing to do with my course content, but I wanted to build rapport with the students. Or I just like puppies, so I put them all over my class. Well, so if this image is decorative and it has no purpose or bearing on the content, you can also click this button, indicate image is decorative. And then that tells the screen reader that this image can be skipped. It's just for decorative. So if I click on make the image decorative, I think right here, indicate image is decorative. Click that and I close it. So instead, I'm going to show you how to edit the alternative text that is with that image. So I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to say, a black and brown puppy in a white cup with red dots. Probably not a real image or description I would use in my class, but that does describe the image. So if you closed your eyes and someone said, what do you see? or you ask someone what they see, if you close your eyes and they said it's a black and brown puppy in a white cup with red dots, you can kind of come up with an image in your mind or an understanding of what that image is doing. So then you click save. Um, anyone else having struggles? Is it working for you? Um, a little feedback would be awesome. And you're welcome to unmute your microphone if you have one set up and just speak because I can hear you and Jeff can hear you and um, we can talk that way as well. Um, when, you, when it works, you hit, you choose one of these and usually um, if you've done a good description, your uh, score is gonna go to 100%. Sometimes it goes to 88, it might go to yellow, it might go all the way to green. I do notice with Ally, if there's any text in your image, they definitely want you to include most of that text in your description. And sometimes that makes sense and sometimes it does not. So use your best judgment um, and you're always welcome to ask if you're not sure. Okay, so now we've tried it. Um, <clears throat> so we went through any questions. All right, so then um, the other thing Ally is focusing on right now is anything you've uploaded into your course. So um, your documents need to be accessible. So on that page I've just given you, um, you have something that says, here's a Word document, it's linked there, and there's another one of those red gauges. So that tells us it's not accessible and it has some issues. Um, this is not as easy as alt text, when alt text works, because, because it's an uploaded document, you're gonna have to download the document, make a fix, and then re-upload it to your Canvas classroom. Um, and the frustrating part about that is, Ally is trying to keep it simple for faculty, so that you're not overwhelmed. So um, as we go into the classroom to test it out, it's gonna tell you what the main and most important issue is first for that document. And so it might say, you know, it's missing header text. And then you download the document, you fix the headers, you upload it again, and then it goes, oh, your tables are missing labels. So it can be kind of frustrating because that download upload process can take time. So soon they listened, um, and so soon a summary of all the issues will be shared as well. So if you're going to download the document, you can make the three or four fixes and then re-upload it and see how you're doing. So um, just know that in advance that it might make you nuts. Um, so let's have you guys try it again. So I'm going to exit out of here. Look at that Canvas page you have. Here's the Word document. You're going to click on that little red icon. And I, I have said this before, but I do want you to rest assured students cannot see these. So. It really is really and truly true. So for example, 
um, this document does not have headings. And then it'll be like, what does this mean? And so again, there's some great quick info that tells you what that means and why you should do it. And, um, and then how to add the headings. And so based on where you're getting it, um, it's got advice for you from Word, for, for Microsoft Office, um, LibreOffice, or something else. And deliberately, they haven't gone into too much detail because again, they don't want you to get bogged down. Um, particularly if it's a PDF document, those can be a little challenging to remediate. And so really in that case, they want you to reach out to your e-learning department or your accessible IT department to really find out how to get some help and how to fix those. So um, again, they're trying not to overwhelm you. Um, so just have a look, click on that Word document, <clears throat> read through what these options are. Um, we're not gonna spend the time this minute to download it and try and fix it, um, but I just want you to know that that's the process. And at the end of my yapping away here, you'll be able to try that in your own class, and then it'll be worth your effort to remediate the documents. So, um, hopefully that makes sense for you. And I'm gonna go back here. Anyone have any questions about how that's working for them? Any questions over there, Jeff? Okay, Jeff shaking his head no, so we'll just keep moving on. Um, and then this is that third feature of Ally. Um, for students, they are able to get those accessible versions on demand from their home, anytime, anywhere, um, as long as they have access to a device. So they're not gonna get behind just because you haven't had a chance to upload or update and remediate all of your um, docs and PDFs. So um, there's no more waiting. And I do want you to know, this is a 100% compliant fix. I know a lot of faculty have a lot of PDFs in their classes. Does this make it all good? Um, if you have a bunch of scanned documents. Unfortunately, no, it really doesn't. Um, you do need to do a bigger um, effort to make those more accessible because it's not 100% compliant. Um, and as you can see, you know, there's those five versions I mentioned earlier that it can create. Um, and I'm going to show you an audio version sample here in a second. But if you have like a 10 page syllabus, so that's a PDF and it's not a tagged PDF and students can't access it with their screen readers, they can download the audio version. But if they want to get to the grading scheme, which is typically the last thing on your document, they're going to have to listen to a 10 page oral recitation of your entire syllabus to get to that last page. They can't navigate through the recordings to find out the information that they need. So again, this is a short-term fix, um, so don't rely on it as the final fix. So I want you guys to try it. This one's a little different. Um, there's a black triangle next to any uploaded document. And I want you to go ahead and click on that and then choose one of the options. <coughs> so I'm gonna go ahead back into my class here and so it's a blue little blue arrow right here it's very tiny um, but I'm going to click on this one and it says do you want to download that document or do you want to access the accessible versions I want the accessible versions and here there's four choices and so you can click audio you can click download it takes a few minutes um, but the magic of television no um, I have gone ahead and already done this and so, oh, here it is. I want you guys to just listen for a second. And actually, before I play it, I want you to go ahead and preview the document so you can kind of see. This is a long document. I think it's seven, oh, 12 pages long, okay? So if someone wanted item, oh, I don't know, gosh, how long? Let's go all the way to the end. 186, they'd have to listen to all 12 pages to get there. So again, not a perfect fix, but it's a stopgap measure. But let's just listen for a minute, because it's pretty pleasant. I was happily surprised. Title, Interactive Techniques. Begin heading level one. Interactive Techniques. Begin paragraph text. Adopted in part bomb. Thomas A. Angelo slash K. Patricia Cross. Classroom Assessment Techniques. Second edition. Jossie Base, San Francisco. 1993. Begin heading level two. Alice and Morris and Shetler slash Mary Marvin. Teaching creatively. 
Okay, so that's enough of that. So they're still even just reading the credits at the top. So that's going to take a long time. In fact, that audio file is 57 minutes long. So if you were trying to get to the end of that document, you have to listen for a whole hour. I mean, you could skip ahead, but you can't pinpoint where you want to be. But the voice is pleasant. Um, it's easy to understand. It's not a robot voice, so that made me pretty happy. Um, so go ahead, um, try and download a different accessible version. Um, see what happens. And be sure to ask questions if it's not working or you have any thoughts or anything you want to say, by all means, jump in. All is quiet, so I'm assuming that worked for folks. Oh. How does the Braille work? That is an excellent question, and we are so fortunate that Angela Hughes from Student Services for Students with Disabilities has just walked in the room. And Angela, if you would come up here really quick, because the speaker or the microphone is right here. The Braille. Oh, come on over here first. Is it on your face or is it right here at the monitor? It's right here. Oh, okay, there it is. Hi, I'm <laughs> Angela, Services for Students with Disabilities Specialist. The Braille would work by running a digital signal to a digital Braille maker. So you have to have one of those plugged into your computer. But that's like um, a handheld device or maybe a keyboard-sized device, whichever kind you get, that lifts and lowers little Braille dots um, underneath your fingertips to spell out each letter or each line of phrases. If you get the big kind, then you get multiple um, letters, words, and sentences. If you get the small kind, then you get the little dots that just function like one word at a time or one letter at a time. But that's what exports. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'm finding some pictures for you so you guys can see. Um, oh, it does not make you a Braille book. That takes a lot of time and specialized equipment that we don't have at our college, we would send that out. Most of the students that I know with visual impairments, though, they are not super Braille literate. It takes a lot of training, and they oftentimes prefer audio format anyway. Thank you, Angela. That was awesome. Okay. There was a comment that it didn't open Windows. Um, let's see. Um, Okay, right, so the Braille file, is the Braille file you're saying wouldn't open with Windows? Okay, yeah, and that would be true because as Angela mentioned, you need to have a specialized device to access that. Really, as faculty, um, primarily we're going to be downloading um, either the audio version um, or the tagged PDF. So if you have a scanned, this is good to try out, so if you have a lot of scanned pages from books in your classroom, um, they need to be good scans, they need to be square to the page, not tilted, um, and a pretty good clear scan. You can try and run um, the tag PDF version and see. And so what that means is when you make a scan of a page, it just makes an image. So um, you put that in your classroom, and uh, if you click on it, it's just an image. So again, it would need alt text, like the puppy dog needed alt text, and you'd need alt text that had all the words on that document in order for a screen reader to read it. Because when it hits an image, again, it can't, it can't decipher what's in a picture. And so when you run a PDF through um, any kind of assistance to make it a tagged PDF, tagged means it recognizes the words um, and does this thing called optical character recognition, or OCR. And that says, hey, I think there's words on this page. And then it translates those words from an image into actual words. Um, and so what does that mean? That means if you have a document on your page, and see how I can select text in this image here? That means this PDF is already tagged, um, and this is more likely that a screen reader could read it. If I was clicking like this and it was just selecting the entire page, then we would know it is just an image and it's completely inaccessible. Um, and I won't give my whole, well, Maybe Angela has an um, idea about PDFs, but overall, um, people in the accessibility world are not fans of PDFs. 
And I know that in the past, um, people were encouraged to use PDFs because a variety of reasons, but one was not all students had access to Word, and we wanted to make sure they could access our syllabus and our content, and that was a good idea in its time, but um, time has moved forward, digital content has moved forward quickly, and um, now we have free access to the full Microsoft Office suite for all our students, so that's really not a concern anymore. Um, also, I know some people are worried that students are going to edit their syllabus and change what's in there. But, you know, they could do that anyways if they really wanted to and they're savvy enough. And the truth is, you have your original syllabus master. If they can't edit your version, um, you send it to your division. They can't edit the division's version. So should there be a dispute down the road and the student went in and edited the syllabus, you have the master. So that's really not a reason either. Um, so. If you really, really have to use PDFs, we can help you make them better. So, hope does that answer all the questions? Is there any other? Okay, I think we're just gonna move on. Oh, yep, Angela has one more thing to say. So, when I mentioned most of our students prefer audio format instead of braille format, that's because most of the students that I've met who are blind are reasonably blind and they're still learning their disability. Deafblind students, though, you don't really have that much of a choice. Most of the deafblind students would prefer Braille, the tactile Braille. So we haven't met many of those in our SSP office just yet, but that's mainly who it's for. Thanks, Angela. All right, any other general questions or questions about that PDF alternate formats? Okay, I'll just keep moving. So now um, you have the opportunity to spend some time in your own Canvas classrooms looking at Ally and seeing how it's impacting or um, checking out your content. Um, if you don't have Ally in your classroom right now, um, not to worry. Um, you can help me because the work never ends, right? Um, you're already in this e-learning resources for faculty classroom. You're welcome to poke around, try and remediate some content in here. Um, and for example, let's see. So the fastest way to see if you have Ally in your classroom yet, and I will say is opt in this fall. So if you haven't consciously opted in, you will not have Ally in your classroom, any of your live classes. Um, but if you click the Files tab, <clears throat> that's the quickest way to see Gosh, do I have Ally in here? You have Ally in here if you have an accessibility um, header here and the little gauges down the side. Um, and, oh, I see a question. Let's see. How do you opt in? Excellent question. Um, since you guys are all virtual, um, the easiest way for you to opt in is to send a message to elearning at shoreline.edu saying, hey, I would like Ally added to my classes. And please either say all my classes for fall quarter or specify which item number specifically. And um, we can't add people directly, but I send a list to the Ally folks and they add you. So they're pretty quick about it. So I would say, you know, in the next couple days, if you can let me know, um, I'll have it added probably by the end of next week, if not sooner. Um, so that would be great. Thank you, Kim and or Matt. Um, and so, yeah, so of all of you, and I'm, I'm thinking maybe you guys don't quite have it yet. So come here and let's look around this classroom. Um, and sometimes, so we don't do a lot of direct uploads, but if you've uploaded to a module, you'll see an ally symbol. If it's a file, like here, there's a nice green one, high accessibility score. This one doesn't need any work. But you could click it and you'll get right into those ally screens. Um, and there was a little comment there, even though it's highly accessible, it did say that the headings in this document do not follow logical structure. So I need to check on that because I made that document and I would have thought that they had. So I'll look into that too. So we also have a classroom that's called Ready for Online Learning. And um, I think that one has more images in it and I'm pretty sure most of them do not have alternative text. Um, it's a public classroom, so it probably is not um, in your dashboard, but I'm going to tell you how to find it. 
Um, yeah, oh, here, see, look at these red, red, these need alt text. So let me show you, let me get you a link. So it's from shoreline.edu. It's on our e learning pages. Where are we? Where did online learning go? There it is. Online. I think, here it is, ready for online learning, I do believe. Yep, so that's the link. So here we go. So www.shoreline.edu slash virtual dash campus. Good question. Okay, we have a question. Does Ally recognize the alt text put in the enriched text uh, content editor? That is an excellent question. They are currently working on that feature, and I'm going to say that right now I am not exactly sure on the status, um, but let's try it. So take Smarter Measure Now needed alt text. So if we look here, it has some alt text, but a file name is not alt text, so don't be fooled by that. Um, so it's a Smarter Measure button. So this is how you would add alt text using the um, Rich text editor in Canvas. So if we update that, save the page. Oh, it did. See, it recognized it, which is awesome. Um, so thank you for asking that question. Um, and the good news is also the other thing they're working on, and I think just came out in the last release or is coming in the next release. If I was to paste this image elsewhere, it would bring that alt text with it, where up until now, um, it wasn't doing it. So here's Smarter Measure. I click on that icon. It's missing alternative text. This And this is terrible. This is almost worse than non. Smarter underscore measure underscore color underscore logo underscore trans underscore tm dot png. That's what a screen reader would read, and that's really not cool. So we put Smarter Measure icon. And see how there's extra text here? It says Learning Readiness Indicator. If I hit Save, it's going to let me again. It let me a minute ago. Hold on. I do not know why it's not working for me today. Wow, that stinks. Well, if someone <laughs> wants to type in smarter measure icon or logo, I guess logo makes more sense, and hit save, this image indicator would probably go up to about 60% because it, see, it recognizes this as text. It reads learning readiness indicator. So really what I should say is smarter measure logo, a learning readiness indicator and hit save and if it was actually letting me save I don't know why it's not um, it would probably then come up with 100% so you know you can try fool around a little bit try some stuff someone try and fix that one for me because I can't <laughs> um, and we can go to the modules and these modules have many more images in them um, so there's a video. Hey, Aaron. All right. Um, next page. What's the link? Hmm. Every single one of my buttons here that needs alt text. So, and this is a public course, so this is really shame on me. Um, I need to fix this up. So, if you want to fool around with that, um, that would be awesome. We could add alt text for life factors, and then life factors is in every single module, so it should carry through everywhere that image is. So um, that would be nice. Um, so try that. If, um, and just we'll sit here for a few minutes and wait for some. If you have questions, feel free to use your microphone or raise your hand, and Jeff and I will keep an eye on that chat. Um, and I'm just going to mute myself for a second so you're not listening to me move around up here. Now I check Canvas pages or just files and images. Okay, so um, I'm not sure if you guys could hear that, but there was a chat question. Does Ally check Canvas pages and not just files and images? So at this point in time, um, Ally can only check content that you've uploaded into Canvas. So images you've uploaded, and not even if you link from the web. Like if you use Flickr and you pull in an image, it's not able to scan that. Its current focus is scanning things you have uploaded into files. Um, so, but what is coming is the ability to um, check the content in the rich text editor. So 
um, Ally was bought by Blackboard this summer, um, which we're all holding our breath about. Um, so far, so good on the support. But Blackboard got that. It's called the WYSIWYG editor. They got that support and functionality before Canvas did. So um, we've been loosely promised that we'll have that functionality before the end of the year. Um, but we couldn't nail them down on a more specific date. Um, but that is coming, because that's a huge thing um, in terms of how to use headers inside Canvas pages, how to um, use Canvas to label your tables in an accessible way. Um, so that is coming. So all the more reason to knock out all your alt text sooner rather than later so you can turn your attention to your pages in the new year. Hi, so we had another question. Um, will Ally um, be able to look at images you've embedded in quizzes? Um, it should, but let's just go ahead and test it. Because <clears throat> again, as long as they're uploaded into the files area, 99% sure it will. Where's my classroom? Um, but let's, uh, let's go in my practice classroom, actually, so we're not messing up that classroom. And I think I have Ally in here. I'm just going to double check. Yes, I do. All right, so let's make a quiz. Let's add a quiz. So this is just a practice classroom where I mess around all the time. Um, so you're welcome to do that as well. Um, I can show you how to make a practice classroom. So ally practice quiz um, testing ally and images. Oops. And a quiz. Oh boy, can I not type today? All right, I'm gonna go to questions. New question. Can Ally see this image? Let's add an image. So I'm gonna embed an image. Again, if you use a URL or Flickr, it's not gonna be able to see it. So I'm gonna go to my Canvas files. Um, and let's find. Here's an image. No idea what that is, but okay. It's got terrible alt text. So we're gonna update that. We're gonna update question. Oh, look at that, perfect. So Ally can see this image and Ally is not happy with this image. So we would go here and yeah, 215.jpg, not great alt text. What does that even mean? So you'd wanna put essentials of business. Boy, I cannot type when someone's looking at communication. <laughs> um, text book cover with a tablet and hand with many apps floating above it. And let's see if it lets me save now. No, I do not know why. I think it just doesn't like me today. But um, that is what I would do. So there you go. And assignments also? Um, I'm sure it does as well, but let's just test that. Thank you. So we'll go to assignments. We'll add a new assignment. And we'll call it Ally Testing Alt Text. This is an Ally assignment. Can it see or can it scan images and docs? And I'm quite certain because this isn't just this is a rich text editor. I'm quite certain it will. So we'll add an image. Um, let's not. Let's do this one. It's way too big. We'll make it a little smaller. This from nutrition and fitness class. And then let's also add a document. So let's go to my files tab. Um, here's a document. No idea. It's probably not accessible because that's from 2014. All right. Um, it's an assignment. Let's do not graded and no submission. Where is that? Hmm. All right. Anyways, let's see if that works. Oh, yep, Ally did not like that image, and Ally does not like that document. So, same thing. We get support throughout. 
Great question. Thank you. How is it going? Are you guys working on your own classes? Is it working? Are you having questions about alternative text? Do you want to know more about making documents accessible? Um, just let us know. The fun thing about the alt text is that um, it's a really, it sounds really juvenile, but you know, you see a little red thing there, you go and you spend a second, you edit it and you make it turn green and you get this little, um, well I do anyways, a little like, oh look, it's green, how cool. Um, positive reinforcement. I see like this image here for life, life factors. I'm pretty sure I did this a while ago. And so that had a green ally symbol, <laughs> messy desk. Um, so I do think that predates ally. Um, and they did, they were just making improvements. So um, that could be one of the ones that they pulled through. But um, if that was Kim, that would be cool if you made a note of one and then um, when you have ally installed, let me know what it looks like. That would be really great. Thank you. Also, let me put this up. There are some resources available. So here's a direct link to that feedback survey. Um, don't forget if you're faculty, make sure you record your attendance on the 10 hour um, required training form stack form that they've made. Um, I made a shorter uh, code to get there, but you just click on it. It's going to open up form stack, oh, which is not working. I guess it didn't like me. Um, you're going to have to actually then go to your emails from your faculty, or from your dean. They sent out an email, I think, earlier this week that has that link, um, but make sure you um, get credit for that. Um, and we'll have a record of who attended as well that we'll share um, with Beta's office. And um, here's also um, an accessible IT resource page. So um, if you click that, it's got all kinds of information. Um, slide decks from all my previous talks, including this one. Look at that. I've already put it up there. Um, some information sheets uh, about Ally, about captioning, how to edit your captions in Panopto. Um, we do have access now to the State Board's Caption Hub. Um, so if you're interested, if you have videos that need captioning, please let me know. Um, if they're reusable, reused um, quarter to quarter, I'm happy to um, have them captioned for you. Um, we even have the ability now to caption YouTube videos that someone else owns. So that's a nice new uh, feature because um, there's a lot of great video content out there. So why would you recreate what's already there? Um, so if it's not captioned, though, it needs to be captioned. So um, if you're interested in Caption Hub, also send me a message. Um, and send it to elearning at shoreline.edu um, so that it doesn't get lost in my inbox, which is a mess. Um, Information, if you are uh, making flyers for any kind of event on campus that's open to students, the public, um, it's required that you add a non-discrimination statement to that flyer. So here's that language um, for your, um, and that way people can request disability accommodations through our services for students with disabilities. So it says at least 10 days in advance. They're not going to not help someone who contacts them eight days in advance, but if it's 12 hours in advance, it may be a little tougher to accommodate. So helping to build in that little um, cushion. Um, and I'm updating this as we go. So I need to put in here upcoming training um, in November, um, on Thursday, November uh, 6th, 9th, I can't remember. I will put it in here though. Um, we're going to do a webinar uh, session on how the different captioning options here at Shoreline. So that will be coming up. Here's some good articles, some other training options, um, and the like. Questions welcome all the time to particularly Shoreline, uh, elearning at shoreline.edu because if I'm not in the office, Jeff can help you, Patricia can help you, Joe can help you, um, Anne could help you. So that way you get a more timely answer. And I guess I just want to say thank you so much for attending. I really appreciate it. Um, and I will share out, well, I will add the link to the recording to that um, accessible IT resource document. Feel free to share that far and wide with your colleagues. Um, and I think that's going to wrap it up, unless there's any last minute questions. All right. Um, if it's all good with you guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this. And I'm going to end the recording. Um, just please looking forward to any questions you have, just um, bring them on.
All right. Take care. Thank you.